Game number two of this major series lacrosse semifinal between the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club and Peterborough Lakers shifts to the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whitby, Ontario, as we get you set for this contest in a series which Peterborough leads one game to nothing. Jack Moore alongside Andrew Osman. And Andrew, in game one, it was a 12-8 win for the Peterborough Lakers that gets them ahead in this series. And you know what? It fits the formula between these two teams, Peterborough and Brooklyn, this season. The home team has won every game in the regular season and to start the playoffs, but the way the playoffs work, the seven-game series, home, 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 back and forth. So that's why we're back here home in Brooklyn for game number two. And before we get you to action, we'll get you to O Canada. Set for ball drop. Let's take a look at tonight's starting goaltenders, Andrew. And there you have a look at Doug Buckin facing 50 shots so far in these MSL playoffs in the only game so far, making 42 saves, only allowing eight goals against in game one. And that's been a theme this series, uh, season series between these two teams. The away team that has had every single loss, only one time has been able to crack double digits in goals scored. And on the other end of the floor, it's going to be Nick DeMood getting the nod. Last night, it was Riley Hutchcraft, but Jason Crosby's going with Nick DeMood tonight. You see there the record for the regular season, 2-3. And oh, save percentage, 7-7-0, seven, seven, oh, and it goes against at about 11 and a half. But he's ready to go, and Jason Crosby had a lot of good words to say about DeMood and the goaltenders said whoever's going to get it hot will earn the job throughout these playoffs. We saw it through the entire regular season where he went back and forth between his two goaltenders. He told us before today's game that his two goaltenders need to be the MVPs in order for them to beat this Peterborough Lakers team. And that's what they're looking for here today is Peterborough can't advance the ball through the timeline in the first eight seconds. So it will be Brooklyn ball. And the first possession here for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club after falling down one game to nothing after last night's 12-8 loss. Turnover as Peterborough will take over, so Brooklyn's first possession is empty, not even a shot on goal. And the Lakers will bring it back over the timeline and go into the offensive zone for the first time here tonight. Joe Reseteris had himself a nice stat line of a goal and an assist last night. Tate Catoni chasing that one down, but Curtis Knight will find it. And Brooklyn gets the ball right back. Curtis Knight setting up in the offensive zone. Off to Kyle Waters. Spins away from the defender and he scores! First shot on goal for Brooklyn, and it finds the back of the net, Kyle Waters. And one minute, 13 seconds in, it's one nothing Brooklyn. And just like that, he uses his reach to his advantage, as we'll see on that replay, Kyle Waters does. He's known to cut towards the net. He makes a decent spin move on the defender to get free and gets towards the net of Doug, Doug Bucket. And that's where we sit, one nothing. So Kyle Waters, who had two assists in last night's contest, gets the scoring started early on in the first period. Brooklyn this season, four of their six wins coming on home floor. Peterborough trying to get it back, and Nick DeMood makes the save, but 
They said he didn't make the save. The ball missed the net. So a shot clock violation against Peterborough, and it's Brooklyn ball. So Connor Kiernan into the offensive zone with Ryan Lanchbury. Lanchbury off to Brady Kiernan. Trying to find the lane. He might have hit Luke Pilcher, and that's going to be over and back against Brooklyn. Big advantage with the ball rolling all the way down yeah. into the offensive zone for Peterborough as Ryan Lanchbury can get off for a change and not force to play defense in the transition game. Holden Katoni picking this one up off the boards, working against Mitch Wild. Katoni, cross floor with Seteritz, fires a shot that misses and flies into the stands. It'll be Brooklyn ball. And there's Holden Katoni doing a bit of the distributing. Sean Evans usually in that role for Peterborough is not able to make it uh, in this series so far, maybe later on, depending on how things go over in Europe for him. Coaching the Switzerland team at the European Championships. Of course, Brooklyn has Jordy Jones-Smith playing for Team England in those championships. So both teams affected by the Euros. The loose ball on the offensive end of the floor. And Peterborough doing a good job just to wind down the shot clock and get a possession here after Brooklyn comes up empty on that one. Thomas Hogarth. Setting things up, and we mentioned Sean Evans being away. Well, you wouldn't have thought he was away after last night's offensive output here for Peterborough. Two players with five assists for the Peterborough Lakers. As Hogarth can't find that one, Brooklyn gets it back. Both Keel Matisse and Tate Katoni had five assists as Brooklyn goes on a rush. Pilcher fires a shot. Just getting a piece of that one was Holden Katoni to force it wide. Brooklyn still with 15 to shoot. And possession in the offensive zone. Knight off to Dyson Williams. And Doug Buckin got a piece of that one. Nope, it missed. And that'll be over and back against Brooklyn. And again, the ball going all the way down the floor for Peterborough to set up with a decent shot clock. That double-edged sword we said last time Peterborough gets into the offensive zone. Ryan Lanchbury gets off the floor. As nice play by Ryan Barnable to pick off that pass. Looking for Dyson Williams fresh off the bench. But at the same time of allowing that ball to go all the way down as Dyson Williams steps in and shoots. Bucken makes the save and Peterborough gets it right back. You allow the offense to set up and get an offensive possession with a full 30-second shot clock. As a pass in front, Hogar scores! Thomas Hogarth, his third of the series. And Peterborough ties the game at one, four minutes, 20 seconds in. And it was a Peterborough bounce. You see it here, just hop. And a little tip to himself there was Ogilvy, And he gets Hogarth right in front. And it's just a one-on-one -on -one at that point with Nick Mood, and he ties it up at one. So Peterborough taking advantage and tying this game up. At one goal apiece. Hogarth, who had two goals last night, has one here tonight. Nice play by Mitch Ogilvy to shovel off the ball to him on that two on one right in front of Nick DeMood. And even to tip it to himself past the Brooklyn defender to give himself that two on one. Corey Vitarelli on the floor as a shot comes on DeMood. Vitarelli had himself a real nice game last night as well three goals and two assists. Peterborough getting lots of scoring from multiple outlets. One of the conversation pieces with the Brooklyn coaching staff was needing their all-star players to be all-stars in this series. Pilcher fires a shot that goes high and off the back of the net, stays in the crease, and it'll be Peterborough ball. Robert Hope brings it over the timeline now as he gets checked by Byrne.
Lakers firing a shot. Take Katomi stop by Nick Demood. Fresh shot clock and an offensive rebound for Peterborough. Vitarelli off to take Katoni and into the corner. Now a shot comes on from Mark Matthews and Demood makes another save. So Ryan Barnable will set things up and now get a change as he finds Luke Pilcher. Go Lakers! Curtis Knight gets a screen in the corner, and that was an illegal screen, so it's Peterborough ball. Just a little too much from Chris Bushy. And Peterborough gets it right back. Joe Reseteris. Off to Vitarelli. Vitarelli stepping in and works that one back. It goes off the boards and Holden Katoni has seven seconds to shoot. Long shot gets stopped by Demood. And Brooklyn will get a good defensive stop there. Dyson Williams. Off to Lansbury. Lansbury had two assists yesterday as Brady Kiernan steps in and he scores! Brady Kiernan had the hat trick yesterday, his first of tonight's game. And it gives Brooklyn a 2-1 lead in the first period. And a great move there by him. You see him get the pass here from Ryan Lansbury who doubles back, just sneaking in at the top of the circle. He fakes a big shot and then cuts in and then gets a little bit of space and bounces it right off the floor and makes no mistake Brady Kiernan does to get Brooklyn back that one goal lead. So after a four point night last night, three goals and an assist, now on the score sheet with a goal is driving towards the net and getting a shot away was Chad Tutton. He was stopped by Demood and quickly up the floor is Brooklyn. That quick shot gets stopped by Doug Buckton and out of play so it'll be Brooklyn ball. Yeah, Brooklyn ball and a fresh shot clock after that quick shot in transition. Get your big guys on the floor, Bushi, Dyson Williams. Pilcher works this one off. Now Dyson Williams steps in and that gets shouldered away by Doug Buckin. Offensive rebound by Chris Bushy. Now Connor Kiernan steps in and misses that one wide. Dyson Williams off for Bushy, goes off his stick and a battle ensues behind the Peterborough net with Eric Shewell and Doug Buckin will find the loose ball and settle things down for the Lakers. Couple good chances on that offensive possession, but no goals there for Brooklyn. Trying to get that offense going. Went into the third period down 10-5. Lost the game 12-8. Quick shot gets stopped by DeMood. And Brooklyn will get possession right back, so. Coaches and staff for Brooklyn challenging their goaltenders a little bit. Pre-game, and it seems like Nick Demood has stood up to the challenge so far in this one. That shot goes wide from Brooklyn, and that will be over and back. And Peterborough will get a fresh shot clock and possession in the offensive zone. Yeah, Nick Demood there on the last play with a great positional save. He had that stick right between his legs, and that's exactly where the shot went. And he made the easy stop; didn't really have to move much for it. Corey Vitarelli working it around as that shot comes on from Hogarth. Save made by DeMood. And it'll be Brooklyn ball as Peterborough touched it while it was in the crease. Chris Bushy. Driving towards the net. Now steps off to the corner. Connor Kiernan off to Brady Kiernan. Trying to step around, Paul Dawson gets it off to Bushy, gets the screen, Bucken makes the save. Robert Hope picks up the loose ball and Peterborough bringing it back up the floor. Gil Matisse, who had five assists yesterday, worked this one off. Gets it back from Kate Katoni, so that, sorry, that was holding Katoni with the shot. Demood with the save. And Brooklyn finding the loose ball. 
Jake Stevens back to Kyle Waters. Waters, who opened the scoring in this one, now has 15 on the shot clock. Brady Kiernan. Off to Williams. Bucket makes the save. And the rebound picked up by Peterborough. Jay Thornburg will bring it up the floor. Now Jay Thornburg with speed, but Chad Tutton a little bit too aggressive there, and it'll be Brooklyn Ball as he took Luke Pilcher down hard to the floor. Peterborough's bench screaming for too many. And that will be the call. So Peterborough will go to the first power play of the game with 9.53 to go in the first period and Brooklyn leading 2-1. Yeah, we'll get our first look here at a power play of the game and it's gonna go to Peterborough. And they're down once, they'll look to tie it. They were unsuccessful yesterday. They were unable to get a power play goal in the game one. So they will be looking to correct some things, perhaps maybe due to Sean Evans' absence. You know, your, your point guy on the, the power play for Peterborough, the guy that usually moves the ball around and really controls the play. As we just wait here for a second, the Boots grabbing a sip of water and he heads back to the Brooklyn net. We have Zach Young's gonna head off there and serve two minutes or less. And Nick DeMood actually relaying some messaging to his teammates on the floor, the four of them now that set up that box to Kill this, kill this one off. Resetteris setting up in the offensive zone, gets it back, steps in, and that shot gets blocked by Mitch Wild. So the over and back will not go against Peterborough. 10 to shoot for the Lakers as that shot goes wide, and this one will be over and back against Peterborough. So 23 seconds gone in the penalty to Brooklyn. And it's pretty much been Peterborough killing their old penalty so far with some quick shots, not moving the ball around that much, and some block shots or missed nets are, you know, the reason why we're down the floor now in Brooklyn just hanging on to kill some clock. Dyson Williams off to Brady Kiernan. Kiernan back to Williams. Williams off for Bushy. Waters looking for it in front of the net, but Robert Hope finds the loose ball, and Peterborough gets it back up a man. They're gonna take their time here, set it up, get the right guys on the floor, set up this penalty, or this power play rather, with uh, about 15 seconds left in the shot clock. Reseteritz works that one off. Mark Matthews with a shot that misses. And this will be over and back against Peterborough once again off another errant shot. That was the second time now, and looking by the clock, Brooklyn will have a decent chance here to Kill some time again, and then maybe one last possession for Peterborough to try to score on the power play. Luke Pilcher off to Ryan Lansbury, back to Connor Kiernan, back to Lansbury in the corner, takes a weird bounce to Pilcher. Now Lansbury in front, he scores! Ryan Lansbury short-handed gives Brooklyn a 3-1 lead with eight and a half to go in the first period. Well, when that ball gets spinning on this concrete floor, it'll bounce any which way. These guys can read that, but this one, a number of bounces and almost a miscommunication worked out in favor of Brooklyn as Luke Pilcher and Ryan Lansbury went to go for the ball, but it was Pilcher that grabbed it, ducked it off to Lansbury, and he scored shorthanded to get a 3-1 lead. If you were Brooklyn there, you were content with just taking that all the way down to the end of the shot clock, as Peterborough does a good job of picking up that ball before it goes into the crease by Jay Thornburg. But the goal will do just as well to give yourselves a two-goal cushion. Connor Kiernan picking up another assist. As Reseterich tried a quick shot. It's loose in the Brooklyn crease, but Nick DeMood able to find it and stretch the floor. Now a two-on-one for Brooklyn. Stevens gets stopped on that shot as Doug Buckin standing tall in net. Brady Kiernan with the ball as we're back to five on five. Bushi fires a shot. Doug Buckin makes the save as it rolls in the crease. And Peterborough gets it back, so only goal scored on the man advantage for Peterborough went the way of Brooklyn. Now with two short-handed goals in the series to go with their two power play goals, and Mike Byrne is on a fast break for Brooklyn. Curtis Knight scores! 
Curtis Knight picks up his second of the series, and it's 4-1 Brooklyn. And Brooklyn's just getting all the energy right now, getting all the right bounces, making all the right plays. That time, Curtis Knight going down the floor in transition. See a close up here, looking to pass, and he does, streaking down the middle. That's a couple times now that there's a guy just one on one with the goaltender bucking for Brooklyn, and they make no mistake, and they make it four to one. But on that play, Peterborough had a couple guys on the floor that didn't even come back or head off for a change at all. Stayed off in the offensive zone, and here comes Brooklyn again. Another chance as Connor McClellan gets stopped by Doug Bucken. 52 seconds, two goals for Brooklyn, and a 4 1 lead with seven minutes to go in the first period. Very good start for Brooklyn, trying to rebound after that game one loss. Holden Katoni, working it around is Hogarth, stepping around Barnable, shovels it cross floor, and Holden Katoni with five to shoot, rips one wide, and the loose ball will go into the air, and it's going to be Brooklyn ball on the shot clock violation against the Lakers. And we heard it from Jason Crosby before the game today. He's looking for Brooklyn to push the pace, push the ball up the floor in transition, and we've seen that a number of times prove successful. successful. Now Lanchbury, off to Dyson Williams. He waits and finds Bushy. Now Connor Kiernan. Steps around the defender. Pass in front for Pilcher as his bounce shot goes high. And Dyson Williams gets it back with five to shoot. That shot gets blocked in front of the Peterborough net. And the Lakers will push the floor. Mark Matthews. Drops this one off. Matt Gilray out in front. And Matisse gets stopped by Nick DeMood. Now here's Carter McKenzie. Fast break chance. And like you said, we talked to the Brooklyn coaching staff. They said, we need to push the floor a lot more than we have. We need to force them in the transition game and not allow their defense to get set. Especially with all the offensive weapons that this Brooklyn team has. Peterborough setting up again. That shot stopped by the mask of Nick DeMood. And the rebound picked up by Curtis Knight. Mike Byrne has Barnable out in front. He'll take the shot, but it gets blocked. And Brady Kiernan finds it in the corner. Connor Kiernan. Finds Lanchbury off the bench. 10 to shoot for Brooklyn. Ryan Lanchbury's shot gets stopped by Doug Buckin. Bucket stretches the floor himself as Vitarelli driving towards the net gets checked by two Brooklyn defenders as Chris Willman trying to find the loose ball in the corner. And Vitarelli called on the foul, so it will be Brooklyn ball. Kyle Waters couldn't hang on to that pass, but he plays it off the boards as Chad Tutton trying to knock it down, jumping in the air, and Chris Bushy steps in. Bushy out in front as that ball bounces. Dyson Williams was looking for it. Matt Gilray didn't know who had it, but he did. Now Reseteris. Slowing things down midway through the shot clock. Four minutes to go in the first period. 4-1 Brooklyn. Reseteris drops this one back to Katoni. Now it's Hogarth being checked hard as Reseteritz scores. Joe Reseteritz out in front. Second of the game for Peterborough, and it's 4-2 with 3.49 to go in the opening period. And they really needed that one to kind of slow down Brooklyn, who's been really pushing the pace. It's kind of a mess there in front a few times there for Joe Reseteritz. He gets that loose ball and throws that one right past Nick DeMood, right in front, point blank. Gets it to a 4-2 score now for Brooklyn. See on the screen, Joe Reseteritz, who asserts his dominance in the NLL as well. First American-born player to have a 100-point season in the NLL. That shot by Peroni gets blocked. Dyson Williams' shot gets stopped by Doug Buckin. Mm -hmm. 
Now Hope working with Tate Cotone, Mark Matthews. Off to Austin Hazen. Had a goal and three assists yesterday. Has been relatively quiet in this one. Now Tate Cotone puts one towards the front of the net. And Nick DeMood will find it and play it ahead to Curtis Knight as Vitarelli tied up with Carter McKenzie in front of the Brooklyn bench, but cooler heads prevail. And they both go back to their respective benches. Dyson Williams steps around the net. Brady Kiernan, his shot gets blocked. Bushy steps in, couldn't control it, and couldn't get a shot away before time expired. He nearly had it there. You no know, Laker defender knew exactly where the ball was. Bushy did. He was trying to quickly grab it and throw it right on net. She just couldn't get a handle on it. Matt Gilray gets the ball over the timeline, and Peterborough getting the right offensive players on the floor. That shot on. DeMood makes the save and traps the loose ball in the crease. Just over two minutes to go here in the first period. Mike Byrne. Kyle Waters stepping off the bench, working against Mitch Ogilvy. Now a turnover forced, but a foul called against Peterborough back in their own end, and that will give Brooklyn the ball right back. So a foul behind the play after Mitch Ogilvy forced the turnover, and Kiernan tried to take advantage, but he got stopped by Bucken. Luke Pilcher. Off to Dyson Williams, setting up off the boards. Kiernan, penalty coming up to Peterborough. Connor Kiernan tried to shovel it across. Robert Hope pulled it down. And we'll see a penalty go against Peterborough, and Brooklyn go to their first power play of the game. And there's more going on as well right now, and Nurse, the official, comes in to break it up, but we'll see the play there where Lord, as you check out of the middle of your screen, just a bit over aggressive there and could have probably been called a play on or let that one go. But as things pick up here, the intensity does. The officials decide to call that one and we'll get the first look at the Brooklyn power play. Ryan Lansbury sets up up top, fires his shot that gets stopped by Bucken. He made the save and the ball went back into the Brooklyn zone, so no over and back against Brooklyn. And Lansbury will get the reset as he brings it back into the offensive end of the floor. Lansbury off to Waters. Kiernan. Had his stick knocked out of his hands by Chad Tutton. Kyle Waters looking for the loose ball. And that one gets sent down the floor by Peterborough. So Nick DeMood will slow things down. And it gets picked up by Lanchbury. So the shot clock resets with 33 on the game clock. It's only a three second differential. Dyson Williams, his shot gets blocked, finds the rebound and scores! Dyson Williams, his third of the series and the league leading goal scorer, gets a power play marker with 17 seconds left in the first period to give Brooklyn a 5-2 lead. And he had a power play goal yesterday, so why not follow it up again today with yet another one? You see actually his first shot, he fans on it, but gets it right back and then goes far side against Bucket and gets that 5-2 Brooklyn lead. But here we go, 17 seconds left. Can Peterborough get that one back here if they can win the draw? So right off the faceoff, Brooklyn gets the ball and calls timeout with 10 seconds left, looking for that final shot. as they'll hope to draw something up to give themselves a four goal lead going into the intermission. Which is gonna be a big plus for them after yesterday's 
performance, being down for most of the game, fighting behind, from behind. And they got a couple goals Brooklyn did to try to get back in it, but very quickly Peterborough was able to cut that off and get a couple right back to stop the onslaught of Brooklyn making the comeback. But here it's almost a reverse, 5-2, 10.2 left here. Can Brooklyn, Brooklyn make it a 6-2 lead after one? They called the timeout, set something up. The ball will start with Brady Kearden. Final seconds of the first period. Dyson Williams' shot goes wide, and time will expire. A good period for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club as they score five and only allow two. In a game two of this series in which they're down one game to the Peterborough Lakers. We'll have plenty of analysis and highlights coming up for you in our intermission. Stay with us. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. Welcome back inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whippy as the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club holds a 5-2 lead over the Peterborough Lakers through 20 minutes of play. Jack Moore and Andrew Osmond along with you. And Andrew, that first period really went the way of Brooklyn and a much needed first period after a 12-8 loss last night in game one against Peterborough. Yeah, we touched about it there in that first period, but Jason Crosby mentioned they really need to push that pace up the floor in transition, and that's exactly what Brooklyn did. They got a couple on the rush from defensive players that were pushing the floor, so it's working offensively for them. But just the pace, it really felt like it was all Brooklyn for most of that, and the Lakers were really on their heels for much of that first period. We'll take a look at the highlights from that first period, and the first goal of the game went the way of Brooklyn, and it was Kyle Waters getting us started. Yeah, Kyle Waters got that huge grab, used his height, gives a give and go. You see a grab it there, about 10 feet off the floor. He's able to snatch that one out of the air, and he spins off the defender and makes his way towards the net. And here he's making a play once again, causes a bit of the turnover, but actually he's going the way of the Lakers. My mistake there. As we see Ogilvy tip it to himself and dump it off to Thomas Hogarth, who is up in the rush. And he scores one of the bright spots this series so far for the Peterborough Lakers. And then here's uh, Kiernan faking that big, big shot and then cuts towards the net, gets himself another 10 feet or so. And here's Pilcher to Lansbury all alone there Short-handed, I believe that one was. And then here I mentioned Brooklyn pushing the floor, pushing the pace in transition, a give and go right there for Curtis Knight. He's able to score on the rush. And then here we see Peterborough Resetteritz gets that one in. And then just at the end here we see it, Dyson Williams fans on it, picks it back up and beats Bucking on the far side. And that's where we sit, 5-2. So it was a big first period for Brooklyn. And when we talked with the coaching staff before the game, the two keys that they gave us, one was the goaltending. They need their goaltenders to be the MVP of this team, especially considering all the defensive players that they have missing through this series. It's going to be a key to have Nick DeMood play as well as he did in that first period. And then we also got to give credit, too, that helps Nick DeMood is the defense for Brooklyn as well, missing a couple big guys in LaFontaine and Jordy Jones-Smith as well, who are gone and haven't been around actually for a little bit, Jody Jones-Smith rather. He's that guy that really brings the ball up the floor in transition really, really well for Brooklyn. They don't have those guys, so give credit to Brook the Brooklyn defenders that are doing a good job in front of Nick DeMood, letting him see that ball cleanly and picking up those rebounds when Nick DeMood can't get them. And then counteractively to that, once they get the saves from Nick DeMood, the other key that they gave us before the game was the transition game, getting the ball pushed up the floor and catching Peterborough on their heels. We saw that on the Curtis Knight goal, and that was one of the big plays to get them up three goals through 20 minutes. And I think when Jason Crosby was speaking to us before the game, he was talking talking not so much about scoring goals in transition, but more pushing the pace and making it feel like Brooklyn's owning the game and owning the floor. And that's almost what was more of the benefit. Yes, they got that one goal from Curtis Knight on the rush in transition, but just the feeling and the pace of that first period was all Brooklyn. As soon as they got the ball, they're up the floor. Not all defenders for Peterborough can get on the floor in time and set up, 
and Brooklyn was trying to take advantage, and they did so after that first period. It's clear 5-2 is the score. So 5-2 for Brooklyn through 20 minutes of play. Can the Peterborough Lakers push the pace here in period number two, or can Brooklyn extend their lead? Well, we're going to find out next. We'll take a break, and we'll have the second period for you. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. Welcome back inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whitby, Ontario as the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club holds a 5-2 lead through 20 minutes of play against the Peterborough Lakers. Well, before today's game, we were in warm-ups. Andrew and I were talking, and I wasn't paying attention, but thankfully Andrew was as an errant ball came right up into the broadcast booth. And check out the hands from Rogers TV own Andrew Osmond on the play. Late reaction skills from me and Andrew with a nice grab. Yeah, I would like to say I'm a free agent. Anybody there in the MSL or NNL, NLL? <laughs> Jack, I forgot. Yeah, you signed it right away. You made that ball worth something as soon as I caught it. It was worth nothing until you signed it. So. Well, the, I feel bad for the kid who, who got it after O Canada running past the broadcast booth that asked for it, and we tossed it off to him. So who knows where that ball is going to end up, but I can't imagine it will be worth more than your standard lacrosse ball. I think it's actually hey, hey, worth hey. less now. Give, give credit to yourself. You're a former <laughs> OUA long snapper with the Laurier Golden Hawks. That's something to be proud of. There's, I got nothing on my resume, so. I think that's what every key, kid <laughs> aspires to be is a two-game OUA long snapper hey, for the o Laurier that, Golden Hawks. That's more games than I've played. <laughs> <laughs> As Brooklyn takes the floor for period number two, Peterborough ready to go. Doug Buckin and Nick Demood, the goaltenders. Matt Gilray on the floor for the Lakers. And Brooklyn holding on to this 5-3 lead as we head into the middle frame here. Solid contingent of fans from both sides yep. making the trip to the Iroquois Park Sports Center off Victoria Street in Whippy. Number of fans making the trip down the 115. Holding to Tony. As Peterborough gets the first offensive possession of the second period. Thomas Hogarth off to Katoni. Now back to Hogarth, and that shot gets stopped by Nick DeMood, but Peterborough picks up the offensive rebound. Take Katoni now. Off to Vitarelli. Austin Hazen steps in. That shot got a piece of by. DeMood, and now a chance in front for Vitarelli. He gets stopped by DeMood, standing tall in between the pipes in the early going of period number two. Mark Matthews. Setting things up for the Lakers. Over a minute gone in this first period. Peterborough, the only team with an offensive possession, as Matthews couldn't get that shot to go. Loose ball, and Peterborough touched it in the crease, so it will be Brooklyn ball for the first time in the middle frame. Now Bushi tried to go cross for it, got knocked away by Peterborough. That negates an over and back, but Matt Gilray the first one on C. Gilray stepping around Kiernan, and DeMoon makes the save. Yeah, great stop there from Nick DeMood. Makes the nice move on, gets the stop on the left shoulder. Now Connor Kiernan trying to find Bushi in front, but he was tied up. And it will be Peterborough Bowl. Paul Dawson. Gets it off to Keel Matisse, take Katoni. Steps in, back to Dawson, going to the net, he scores! He picks up his first point of the series, and the first goal of the second period goes to Peterborough. It's 5-3 Brooklyn. Paul Dawson working that give and go. He handled it well as the pressure from Dyson Williams was trying to push him over the line. He held his own a little give and go. You see him right there down Broadway. The big man makes no mistake. And it makes it 5-3 now, Peterborough trying to chip away at that lead. Typically relied on for his defensive ability. 
Paul Dawson getting it done at the offensive end of the floor now. As holding to Tony. And the first two minutes plus of this second period has been all Peterborough. Take Katoni off to Holden Katoni off the board. Ryan Barnable will find the loose ball, and Brooklyn will look to push the floor. Luke Pilcher into the corner for Lanchbury. Now Bushi working it around to Dyson Williams. Back to Kiernan, and Lanchbury finds it. Now Bushi steps in, and he scores! Under the bar, Chris Bushi and Brooklyn gets it right back. It's 6-3. And what a better run move that was. He comes across with speed, stops up, fakes the pass like he's about to go cross crease. And no elects to shoot it and actually goes short side, top corner. You'll see it here, the white helmet stops up, uses the pick from Lanchbury, who makes a great one there to really free up the lane to the net. And Bushi takes advantage and makes it 6-3 now, gets that goal right back. Peterborough wins the faceoff. And we'll get the next possession, but a good response from Brooklyn after Peterborough got themselves back within two. Chris Bushi with a beautiful shot. Nothing Doug Bucking could do on that one. Mark Matthews steps in and missed that one wide as it's picked up and away goes Brooklyn with Connor McClellan, but he slows things down. Now off to Waters, back to McClellan, and that gets stopped by Doug Bucket. Now pushing the floor quickly is Gilray. Off to Gatoni, but he couldn't control the pass. Holding Gatoni, finds possession, gets the screen as he was being chased down by Barnable. And Matisse will slow things down for the Peterborough Lakers. Five to shoot for Peterborough. As Matisse shot gets stopped by Nick DeMood, Jake Stevens finds the loose ball. Curtis Knight. Off to Lansbury. Now Barnable's shot gets stopped by Bucking. Ogilvy. Waiting for help off the bench. Reza Terrence. We have a correction. We were saying Reza in the first period, thanks to Pat Gregoire, the NLL Media Member of the Year, for that Twitter DM for me. And now here goes Brooklyn the other way. Jake Stevens steps in. Now off to Wild, and he goes off the post. Good chance for the Brooklyn defenders. Jake Stevens and Mitch Wild, but they can't bury that one. Again, in transition, two defenders up the floor there, trying to get an offensive. Now Connor Kiernan. Gets the screen from Bushi. Kiernan back to Lanchbury. Steps in, and that one rings iron as well. Bucking got a piece of it as it goes into the rafters and it will stay Brooklyn ball with a fresh shot clock. And they got the big guys on the floor too. Kiernan Lanchbury and Tyson Williams. Connor Kiernan's pass goes off the end boards over and back against Brooklyn. So Peterborough ball in the offensive zone. Yeah, Brooklyn doing a good job quickly as it was all Peterborough for the first two minutes or so of this period to Give up that goal, get it right back, and really even even things up here now. Rezitera scores! Second of the game for Joe Rezitera. And Peter Rose back within two once again in this second period. Yeah, Rezitera, you see him right here again. Just that big body, it's that big presence that He's able to deal with all the defenders around him. He's able to break the check there. You'll see it here. Breaks off, spins away, gets some room, and gets a shot off before he's challenged once again from another Brooklyn defender. And makes it 6-4. Lakers trying to chip away at the lead, but last time they did it, about 45 seconds later, Brooklyn was able to get it right back. Well, win the faceoff, get a quick shot, and the offensive rebound. 
So that's how you turn a tie quickly if you're Peterborough. Is some sustained offensive pressure. We saw it in the first few minutes of the second. Now take Katoni's shot gets stopped. Hazen out in front, and that one gets blocked before it reached Nick DeMove. Jake Stevens up the floor is wild. Plays it off for Kiernan. Kyle Waters back to Ryan Lansbury. Gets it back to Waters, whose shot gets blocked and goes wide. And Dyson Williams keeps it in the offensive zone with 10 to shoot for Brooklyn. Ryan Lansbury's shot gets stopped by Bucket. Paul Dawson. He gets checked down to the floor by Zach Young. And that will make it Peterborough ball as Dawson and Young having some words after that hit. Jason Crosby not happy with that call from the referees as he was letting them know and you heard a zip it from the referee trailing the play. As now taken away by Brooklyn, and they're up the floor with some speed. Two on one for Brooklyn as Curtis Knight goes to the net. That gets stopped by Bucket. Chad Tutton back into the offensive zone for Peterborough. Tate Katoni. Down low, Mark Matthews scores. Peterborough knocking on the door, down by one, Mark Matthews. And it's 6-5, seven minutes, 10 seconds into period number two. And with that, we're actually gonna get a water break. But you see it here, just cutting towards the net with Matthews, kind of coming out of nowhere. Nick DeMood standing still, a lot of Brooklyn defenders standing still, but who's the only guy on the floor moving? It's Mark Matthews. And he's got the ball and he cuts towards the net and gets the lead to one now. 6-5 Brooklyn, just like that. So Peterborough with just two goals in that first period. Well, the first seven minutes and 10 seconds of period number two, they already have three, and they're within one. Still plenty of second period to go, 12.50 remaining. But a lot of scoring so far, so see if that continues. At times, these teams tend to score in bunches, but then there's long stretches where nobody seems to score, so we'll see what we get now. No shortage of chances at the start of the third period yesterday. Peterborough got a late goal in the second and then an early one in the third, but then it was about 10 minutes before we saw another goal. It was 10-5 Peterborough, and they were holding on, keeping Brooklyn off the score sheet as Dyson Williams went behind the back and Doug Buckin made the save, but a penalty coming up here. And for the second time tonight, Ian Ward will be going to the penalty box. And Brooklyn is back on the power play. And he's not happy about it again. And last time he was vocal going to the box, he's vocal once again. And we'll take a look at that. As it was Pilcher heading to the floor. You'll see him there. He collides with Dyson Williams and then gets hit kind of away from the play. He stays down for a considerable amount of time, either to sell it or really nursing something there. But second chance here now for Brooklyn, and actually Ian Lord getting a warning. We did see it late in the game yesterday where players were getting teed up as they were going to the penalty box. And as soon as the referee told Lord to stop chirping. He told the same to the Brooklyn bench as Ryan Lansbury sets up with Dyson Williams. Kyle Waters back to Williams. He shoots, that gets stopped by Bucket. And picked up by Ryan Lansbury. So a fresh shot clock here for Brooklyn on the power play. Now a chance as Brady Kiernan steps in, missed the net, and it goes into the Brooklyn bench. And they're going to say it went off a of Peterborough Laker leg before it went into the Brooklyn bench. So it's going to be Brooklyn ball. Yeah, <laughs> Jason Crosby might have known that actually. He's the one that caught the ball like I did pre-game and threw that ball right into the offensive zone before any kind of indication was made on where the ball would be placed. He 
took initiative and said, hey, start it down here. My guys need it. I liked your catch better. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Dyson Williams sets up with Ryan Lansbury. Gets the screen from Bushy. Now back to Williams over the top, and that gets stopped by Buckin. Brady Kiernan on the offensive rebound. Now Connor Kiernan behind the back for Bushy right in front. He was all alone but couldn't find the ball. Dyson Williams picks it up in the corner. Williams shoots. That rings iron and bounces back into the Brooklyn zone. And they will say that it did hit a Peterborough Laker. So a reset for Brooklyn once again. So Peterborough hasn't got the ball in the offensive end of the floor on this penalty kill so far. Now a chance is that pass picked up by Brady Kiernan in front. Back to Lansbury. Now Connor Kiernan steps in. That shot misses wide. Battle in the corner picked up by Connor Kiernan. And that gets picked off by Doug Bucket. So for the first time here is a turnover by Bucket to Brady Kiernan. He steps in and shoots it wide. And it goes out of play. This time it will be Peterborough ball. So after all of that, <laughs> a minute and 41 seconds of offensive time for Brooklyn. No goals to score, show for it. And Peterborough with the ball at the offensive end of the floor. So this will end the Brooklyn power play as Peterborough spent more than 75% of that penalty kill in their own zone. And we're back to five on five as Hazen steps in and gets stopped by to move. Connor McClellan playing that transition game finds Connor Kiernan. Now Curtis Knight gets the screen from Waters. Finds Dyson Williams, who goes off to Luke Pilcher. Now Knight steps in. Another post against Brooklyn. And that one goes down the floor, but the over and back was negated. So Nick DeMood way out of his net to play it. That's three times now Curtis Knight's been up the floor and gets a pass like that. He scored once on it. Now that's twice here. He's had additional chances. Pass out in front. They score! Connor Kiernan behind the back. And it's a two-goal lead once again for Brooklyn. And you can see it there, smiles all around for Brooklyn that's able to get that goal back and get it back to a two-goal lead for them. Ryan Lanchbury with a smile, knowing that was something fancy that we saw there from Kiernan. We didn't see it on that one. We'll try to get it again, but he went, as you said, behind the back on that goal, took the pass and immediately whipped it behind him and beat goaltender Doug Buckham. And Brooklyn wins the ensuing faceoff. Jake Stevens with speed into the net, missed it as he was looking to hit the far side against Doug Buckin. That could have been a big swing for Brooklyn. He had Dyson Williams right now out in front, but Jake Stevens elected to keep it himself. Now Peterborough setting up in the offensive zone again. Here's Tate Catoni right into the chest of Nick DeMood. Mike Byrne battling hard for the loose ball. Plays it off the boards, but it gets bound by holding Catoni. Reza Terrence off to Catoni. Now Reza Terrence with the shot, looking for his third of the game, but it gets stopped by Nick DeMood. Ryan Barnable setting up in the offensive zone as Kyle Waters steps off the bench. Here's Chris Bushy driving in as Ogilvy forces him back. Bushy worked that one off. Brady Kiernan steps in. Now off to Waters. He shoots and scores. Kyle Waters, his second of the game. And Brooklyn regains that three goal lead and some pushing and shoving after the play. And we'll see some penalties as Luke Pilcher and Matt Gilray both sent to the penalty box. We'll sort it out exactly who's gonna sit and exactly for how long, but it's Kyle Waters sneaking this shot in. Bucken did not see this. Without a doubt, he did not know where the shot was coming from. He did not react at all. It was in the back of the net before he knew his shot even came. And Kyle Waters getting into it after 
getting his second. Oh, we're going to get. We're getting it five on five, I believe. So it'll be two, four minutes. It's going to be four on four as Luke Pilcher and Matt Gilray both set off. And it looks like Gilray's going to get a five minute major, and Pilcher's going to get two two minute minors. And it was off the goal. Luke Pilcher was knocked down to the ground, and then as he was getting up, he got checked back down, and it looked like a, a leg to the head. So it will be four on four for the next four minutes as Ryan Lansbury and Brooklyn start with the ball. Dyson Williams shot goes wide. And here goes Mitch Ogilvy, but he can't catch up to the ball the first time. He does the second time. And Nick DeMood makes the save in transition for Brooklyn. Dyson Williams back into the offensive zone. Kyle Waters setting up with Chris Bushi. Bushi finds an open lane, drops it off to Waters, off the post! So close to the hat trick for Kyle Waters is Peter Bros quickly back down the floor, but the ball just ahead of Jay Thornburg. And Nick DeMood able to slow things down for Brooklyn. Ryan Lanchbury works this one off as Brady Kiernan steps in and Doug Buckton makes the save. So Peter Rowe will now get there. First time in the offensive end of the floor with possession. A couple fast break opportunities in this four on four. The pass in front for Holden Katoni gets stopped by Nick DeMood. Austin Hazen couldn't find it out in front. Jake Stevens picks it up and with speed is down the floor with Curtis Knight. Bushi off the bench. Stevens off to Knight and he scores! Second of the game for Curtis Knight, and it's a four-goal lead for Brooklyn. It's 9-5. And once again, Curtis Knight on the rush, pushing the floor like Jason Crosby wants to see, moving the ball up in transition. This time, though, not as clean of a look. He actually gets the ball, has to dodge the defender. We see it there on the second look. And he makes one move around him and then gets it past Bucket. And we're actually going to get a goaltending change here as Mike Poulin is going to come in to relieve Doug Buckin after that goal where it's now 9-5. So Mike Poulin, you see it there, 2-2 two and two on the season, 14 goals against average save percentage of 739 in the regular season. He's going to come in to relief here. Did not play yesterday, so he's playing here in game two. And he will have to deal with some four on four and eventually about a one minute power play for Brooklyn to start his night. Probably a bit stiff, a bit cold. Nonetheless, Peterborough makes the call and gets the goaltending change. Doug Buckin of the Buffalo Bandits of the National Lacrosse League who lost that NLL championship final Game three to the Colorado Mammoth on home floor. And now Mitch Wilde is quickly up the floor. So Buckin, who was very good last night, Brooklyn put 60 shots on goal. He made 52 saves, but gets chased in this one. And now Mike Poulin in net. Late in the shot clock, Brady Kiernan taken down to the floor, and shot clock will expire. It will be Peterborough ball. I'd like to see Peterborough push it a bit here. It looks like they are, but it's 
so far they've been a bit slow getting up there offensively with some open floor. I'd like to see them take a bit more advantage and get closer to the net here. Reza Terrence. Off to Vitarelli. Now Matisse is Demood. Finds that pass and then works it up the floor for Curtis Knight. Paul Dawson the first on scene and plays it off the boards. Luckily is for Peterborough as Chad Tutton was able to grab that loose ball in front of their own net. Tutton works it out for holding Katoni and that gets stopped by Demood. Another solid save there from Demood. Carter McKenzie couldn't scoop up that ball. Picked up by Tutton, works it off. And now Hogarth. Working against Zach Young, 20 seconds on the shot clock for Peterborough. We're now 30 seconds away from Brooklyn having that minute long power play as Katoni's shot went off his own player and out of play and now Carter McKenzie with a fast break chance for Brooklyn. McKenzie in, gets stopped by Mike Poulin. His first big test in this contest since coming off the bench. Ogilvy finds Katoni. That gets stopped by Demood. Hogarth steps in, and that one gets blocked before it reached the net. Now it's Ogilvy again. As coming out of the penalty box is Luke Pilcher. Brooklyn's on the power play. Peter Bro still has 15 to shoot. Tate Katoni. Driving in as he gets pushed off the ball by Wilman. Katoni holding strong, fires a shot, and Demood makes the save at the end of the shot clock. Nick Demood making very timely saves here in the second period. He's been great at making those stops and controlling the rebounds on the last few possessions and dumping it off. Difference of shot clock and game clock, three seconds on the power, sorry, penalty clock and shot clock as Lansbury goes off the post. Brooklyn gets a reset, 13 seconds on the power play, but a fresh 30 in the offensive zone as Waters finds Dyson Williams. Now Lansbury out in front for Kiernan, that gets stopped by Poulin. Lansbury finds the loose ball. Peter Bros. Matt Gilray steps out of the box and stays at the offensive end of the floor as Brady Kiernan gets stopped, and now Peter Bro back up the other way. Eric Shewell. Knocked off the ball as Brooklyn looking for it. Ryan Barnable finds it. Now Barnable trying to get set up as a couple players tie up behind the play. Dyson Williams comes fresh off the bench. Bushi. Midway through the shot clock for Brooklyn. Four goal advantage. Connor Kiernan, off to Williams who steps in, stopped by Mike Poulin. Yeah, Brooklyn not too happy about that possession there as one of their players was down the floor, tied up and unable to get off for an offensive player change. Now Keel Matisse fresh off the bench, gets stopped by Nick Demood who will send it down the floor quickly looking for Mitch Wild. Now Kiernan off the bench, steps in and missed the net. So that will be over and back against Brooklyn, and Chad Tutton will set up in the offensive zone for Peterborough. Take Katoni. Off to holding Katoni. Gets the screen from Vitarelli. Now a pass in front for Hogarth, and that gets knocked into the corner. Now quickly down the floor, here's Jake Stevens. We've seen him in transition a lot in this second period with the long change. Something that you don't see as much in Peterborough because the benches are on opposite sides of the floor. Same rink that the Peterborough Peets play in in the Ontario Hockey League. As Kyle Waters out in front gets stopped by Mike Poulin. Now interesting though, in lacrosse, the Lakers use the bench that's designated as the away bench in the OHL, so they're across the floor from where the penalty boxes are still. Brooklyn's penalty box is right beside their bench in Peterborough. But on the counteraction to that is Peterborough's bench is more centered in the floor, so it makes it easier to change in the second period. Brooklyn's bench in the second period pushed a little bit farther down because of the penalty boxes. 
just the different dynamics of the rinks in this league. And of course, the square boards in Peterborough as well as that ball loose in the Peterborough zone. Peterborough waiting to pick it up, but it gets taken away by Bushi. Peterborough trying to play the clock game with less than a minute to go here in period number two. Peterborough picks it up and will call timeout with 21 on the shot clock and 30 on the game clock. Yeah, a bit of a mess there behind the Peterborough net for a while. And uh, Mike Poulin, I think, exchanging some words now with Dyson Williams as they head off the floor. But Poulin's in this game. He's got his swagger on. He's boisterous and speaking it up with his teammates as he heads off for a, this timeout. And I believe he's actually going to sit here. So Peterborough's likely going to put out the extra attacker. Brooklyn, as you saw there on the other hand, having almost a player-only conversation. Jason Crosby letting the guys on the floor decide how to play this one. They did reset the shot clock to 29 seconds with 30 on the game clock. So like you said, Mike Poulin will stay on the bench for Peterborough. The restart will happen in the Lakers zone. But this all more than likely, Peterborough will have the last shot on goal of this second period. And you know the Lakers want to get one to pull themselves back within three. They made it 5-6-5 earlier in the period, but then three unanswered by Brooklyn gives them a four-goal advantage with 15 seconds left in the second period. Peterborough with the last possession here of period number two, trying to pull themselves back within three. That's where they were after one. Holden Katoni fires, and that gets stopped by Nick DeMood, and the period will come to an end. Touch and go there in that second period for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club, as Peterborough pulled themselves within one, making it 6-5, but then three unanswered goals by Brooklyn Puts them up 9-5, and they have a four-goal advantage heading into the third period of game two of this major series lacrosse semifinal series. We'll have analysis and highlights coming up for you after the break. You're watching major series lacrosse on Rogers TV. Back inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whitby as the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club holds a 9-5 lead over the Peterborough Lakers through 40 minutes of play and are 20 minutes away from tying this series at one game apiece. Jack Moore and Andrew Osmond back with you. And Andrew, a second period where it felt like Peterborough was starting to get the momentum going, and then all of a sudden, Brooklyn came storming back with three unanswered goals and eventually chased Doug Bucket. Yeah, the first few minutes, they were all Peterborough. They had possession a few times. They got fresh shot clocks a couple of times as well. And kept the offensive players for Brooklyn off the floor for a few minutes, but then it kind of evened out. And as then, as you mentioned, Brooklyn got a few right back to really put their foot in the ground to say, no, we're, st we're still in this one. We're still going to control the pace of this game, and we're still going to rush it up the floor. We'll take a look at the highlights of that second period. And it was Peterborough getting on the board first, pulling themselves within two. Yeah, we'll see it here as the uh, Peterborough Lakers are working on the right side of the floor, and it's that give and go, and Paul Dawson, the defender, the big, tall defender, the unlikely hero there to get them back on the board. Then it's Lanchberry dumping it off, and then the shot coming in there on a nice one, courtesy of Chris Bushy. That kind of surprised the goaltender, Buckin, and we'll see it eventually where Poulin will come in for relief, but it was Peterborough coming right back. It was almost goal for goal there for a bit. Peterborough making it look more like an even game, despite being down coming in to the second period. And then here it was Matthews, the only player on the floor running around, including on the Peterborough side of the floor. The only guy really moving his legs. And he's able to get Peterborough on the board once again and cut that lead, I believe at that point, down to six to five. And then right there, a beautiful goal by Connor Kiernan behind the back to get Brooklyn back on top and extend their lead once again to double digits. And then we see that was the surprise shot from Kyle Waters and then mixing things up and we saw some penalties come out of this. 
of both sides of the floor, which resulted in eventually a one minute power play for Brooklyn. And then right here, Curtis Knight gets a second goal of the game, rushing the floor as we're used to seeing uh, from tonight at least, uh, rushing it up the floor like Jason Crosby said he wants his guys to do. Well, and then that was the goal that eventually chased Doug Buck. And yeah. Mike Poulin has come in, made seven saves on seven shots. So he's kept his team in it. Some good chances that he faced from the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. But he's going to need to be that goaltender that he was in the last few minutes of that second period in the third if Peterborough wants a chance to come back into this game and take a 2-0 series lead. And if the second period is any, any indication of what the third period is going to throw at Mike Poulin, 23 shots were had by Brooklyn in that period. That's more than one shot a minute. So Poulin's going to have his work cut out for him to really make all the stops he possibly can and then let his offensive players chip away at that lead, eventually hopefully tie it up for the Lakers' sake and then walk away with the victory to go home 2-0. Well, easy to talk about the Peterborough goaltenders because there has been a change and Brooklyn's exploded offensively. But the reason they've been able to do that, Nick DeMood has been absolutely phenomenal as we take a look at a couple of his saves from this game so far. Yeah, the key to Nick DeMood's game today is almost just consistency. You know he's going to be there. Look at him right there. Great positional stop. He knows exactly where the pass is going to go. He doesn't really have to adjust much. Right there, he's spotting the ball in air, moving his hands around, moving his shoulders around, making the stops. but. You keep seeing him right there. He's just right in the right spot at the right time. Knows exactly where the ball's going to go. But also, you got to give credit, I mentioned before, to the defenders for Brooklyn, right? Really making and forcing Peterborough to take shots they maybe don't want to take. You know, making it easier on Nick Dabu to see those shots come in cleanly and not so much left and right motion for him to track. We said it earlier in the broadcast. Jason Crosby told us before today's game, the goalie who gets hot and stays hot will be the goaltender through the playoffs. And Nick Demu trying to put his stamp and take the net for Brooklyn after game two, trying to lead his team back to even in this series. And again, this series goes game one in Peterborough, game two in Brooklyn, game three back in Peterborough. So you know Brooklyn doesn't want to go down 0-2 and have to go back to the Peterborough Memorial Center. Can they hang on? We'll find out in the next 20 minutes, and we'll have third period action for you. Coming up next, you're watching Major Series Lacrosse Playoffs on Rogers TV. Welcome back inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center as Brooklyn set to take on Peterborough for the third period up nine to five with 20 minutes to play with a chance to even this series at one game of peace in a best of seven, Andrew. Yeah, best of seven, but as we've been mentioning, it's a back and forth, home and home and home, not so much the two and two. So for Brooklyn's sake, you don't want to go back to Peterborough being down to uh, two games, especially as Peterborough has the home floor advantage in this series. So that would be, you know, a worst case scenario for Brooklyn to go back to Peterborough for game three down two. And then knowing that they don't have home, home floor advantage for the rest of the series and are going to have to get a couple wins on the road. So getting a victory here to even it up at home is pretty crucial. They got a four goal lead here to start the period. We'll see if they can hold on just like Peterborough did yesterday in game one. There's a four goal lead for Peterborough after 40 minutes of play and then quickly made it 10-5 in the third period in game one. Remember, this isn't just the second consecutive playoff game against between these two teams. This is the fourth consecutive game overall that they're playing as they played the last two games of the regular season against each other. They split those ones 1-1. One, one. Brooklyn won at home, Peterborough won at home. Peterborough won at home to start the playoffs. And Brooklyn has positioned themselves well to win the home game in game two here with a four goal advantage into the third period. Chris Bushy, off to Luke Tilter, back to Bushy. Steps around the defender and fires a shot that gets stopped by Mike Poulin. His eighth save since coming in relief. Now here's Matt Gilray stepping around the defender but couldn't control the ball in his stick. Goes off to the corner but Holden Katoni finds it. Reza Terrence. Off to Austin Hazen. 
Now Matisse. Worked that one off. Holding Katoni's shot gets stopped by Nick DeMood. And again, another great stop from DeMood, but also the defense for Brooklyn allowing that shot to come in from quite a distance and allowing DeMood to see that cleanly and make the, the easier stop. Pilcher finds Dyson Williams. He rips his shot. Got through Poulin, but stayed out of the net. And Poulin found the loose ball. Thornburg quickly gets over the timeline, and Peterborough stays on Brooklyn's side of center just. And Mark Matthews' shot goes wide, so Connor McClelland will work it up the floor to Mitch Wild. And Chris Bushy's into the offensive zone for Brooklyn. Connor Kiernan spins away from the defender but gets knocked down to the floor. Paul Dawson trying to pick up the loose ball as it finally gets picked up by Jordan Sturros. And they will call for the floor to be wiped down right at center. Yeah, we'll have the mop come out here, clean up the floor to allow for some safer playing conditions. The first time we've actually had to do this in recent weeks, it's been a few times we've had to have. Not as humid in the building no. here today. As we take a look at some of the physical play that's been happening throughout the course of today's game, and this was just in that last sequence, Connor Kiernan getting knocked down to the floor. And what this replay says to me is welcome to lacrosse. <laughs> the physical play during the play, after the play, when you thought the play was gone, it's still actually happening, and you got to face a couple of hacks and cross checks. That's just the nature of the box the cross. You got to deal with that, even if the ball's nowhere near, you're going to get hacked, you're going to get slashed. Just part of the game. Reza Terrence, his pass goes off the boards, but Kate, Tate Katoni right there to pick it up. Reza Terrence tried a quick one-time shot, but it went wide, bounced off the ref, and DeMood picks it up. Also different playing surfaces between Brooklyn and Peterborough. Peterborough has the turf down in the Peterborough Memorial Center. Hard four here in Whippy, and Brady Kiernan scores. So first goal of the third period goes the way of Brooklyn, and they open up a five-goal lead. Two minutes, 52 seconds into the final frame. And he sneaks this one in. He's getting the ball there. He's going to drive to the net, draw a bit of a screen, get the ball right back, spins away, gets a clean shot, and goes short side on Mike Poulin. The first goal he's allowed since coming in for a relief. And you see it there, a nice clean shot low to the floor. And it sneaks past for that 10-5 now. Now Dyson Williams scores! Just like that, seven seconds later, Dyson Williams picks up his second of the game. And it's 11-5 Brooklyn. Not what Peterborough wants to see at all. You had a bit of a... I don't want to say a chance, but you weren't down by this many seven seconds ago. Now you're down an extra two as Dyson Williams, the leading goal scorer of the MSL, makes no mistake, gets it his second from today. He had two yesterday, make that four in this series. And we still got most of the third period to go. He gets checked hard off the ball by Mitch Ogilvy there after he was looking for his third of the game and second quick one in a row. Take Katoni. Setting up in the offensive zone as Mark Matthews flips it back to take Katoni. Katoni shot gets stopped by Nick DeMood. Now McClellan quickly up the floor. Here's Wild with speed in on a breakaway, and Poulin makes the save. It's a great stop there from Poulin. Really needs to stop the bleeding before it gets way out of hand, and he makes the Athletic stop on that one. Holding Katoni in, and that shot gets blocked. Kept in the offensive zone by Shewell, and Matthews works it down low. A behind the back shot goes wide of DeMood, and Hogarth battling forward in the corner against Mike Byrne. Barnable and Matisse in the corner. As Barnable goes down to the floor hard with Matisse, but the shot clock expires against Peterborough, so it's Brooklyn ball. 
Yeah, Barnabal with a smart play there, knows I could pick it up, but why do that and risk turning it back over and I can just let this shot clock expire? Bryce Bushy. Works it into the corner for Lanchbury. Now Brady Kiernan. Back to Lanchbury. Ryan Lanchbury off the boards to Connor Kiernan. Less than 10 to shoot for Brooklyn. Connor Kiernan back to Lanchbury. His shot gets stopped by Poulin. Brady Kiernan couldn't control it, but Connor Kiernan gets it back at center and a fresh shot clock for Brooklyn. Lanchbury for Kiernan, and that one goes off the post. Back into the Brooklyn end, and the over and back negated, so Brady Kiernan will give his team a little bit of a breather before he picks it up and gets the shot clock reset. Brady Kiernan. Up over center and a fresh shot clock for Brooklyn. Now Lanchbury flips it back and Dyson Williams finds the loose ball back for Lanchbury. Connor Kiernan to the net, stopped by Poulin as Kiernan was diving through the air. And they'll call for the mop again right in the spot where Connor Kiernan was trying for that diving goal to put Brooklyn up by seven. Yeah, the Kiernan brothers looking to get highlight real goals here tonight. Well, we saw one goal from Brady behind the back. That time, Connor trying to go airborne, Superman style, to get that one in off the reception of the pass. Well, we take a bit of a water break here. I'll ask you, Jack, and we, we see the mop being done. You mentioned it before, Peterborough, a bit of a turf surface. Here we got concrete. Day to day, you know, day after day, what's that like on a player? You know, to, to have to play yesterday on a turf, today here on concrete, is it these guys just used to it or? You get used to it, especially the season only having four teams in the league. Coburg and Brooklyn surfaces are the same. Six Nations and Peterborough's surfaces are the same. I think the biggest difference for teams going into Peterborough is the adjustment to the boards, the corners, so different in the Peterborough Memorial Center. As that shot gets through, and Joe Rezateric has his hat trick goal to stop the bleeding for Peterborough. Yeah, Reza Terrence, Carey Peterborough, he's got three now on the night to make it 11-6. And we'll see it here, he's the guy, he's not afraid to get involved and get towards the net. You see it there, just challenging the defender, going right at him and getting that shot just over him on the shoulder for the sixth goal. He's got half the goals for the Lakers. So for Peterborough, they're gonna have to really come back in this one. They're gonna need more of the depth to step up here. It can't just be all Reza Terrence. He's got it again in the corner. Peterborough setting up in the offensive zone. Yeah. Holding, Katoni scores! Yeah. Holding, Katoni gets it back to back for Peterborough. And they're back within four. Still 13.49 to go in this third period. And I talk about the depth, but well, what about the stars? Holding Katoni, held goalless so far today, and here's he's getting his chance. You see him cut away from the attack, and from quite the distance out is able to beat goaltender Nick the Mood. And just like that, Peterborough gets two. So Dyson Williams had it seven seconds apart for Brooklyn. That was 20 seconds apart for Peterborough. And that's how you can try and quickly shift the momentum in a game. Pilcher trying to get it back for Brooklyn. Now here's Dyson Williams on the offensive rebound. Pilcher works it around. Here's Bushy. Ryan Lanchbury. His shot gets blocked before it reaches the net. And Robert Hope picks up the loose ball. Ogilvy finds Hogarth. Loose ball picked up by Nick DeMood. And Brooklyn avoids a fast break chance there by Peterborough. Lanchbury. Sorry, that was Barnable as Waters works it off. Connor Kiernan. 
Trying to find Bushi. Now off to Bushi. One handed gets stopped by Mike Poulin. That one would have made the highlight reel had it gone. It's Chris Bushi. Had Mitch Ogilvy draped all over him. One handed shot got stopped by Poulin. And DeMood finds the loose ball in his own end off the errant pass. Curtis Knight steps in off the post. Great chance there for Curtis Knight. It got through, but it doesn't beat Iron. Saw a few posts in that second period for Brooklyn. And another one right there. Holding Katoni. Couldn't control the pass. Take Katoni now. Steps in and drives, drops it back for Holden. Now a quick shot as Reza Terrence gets stopped by Nick DeMood. And Brooklyn will bring it up the four, four quickly. Jake Stevens has showcased his speed in this game. Dyson Williams. As Pilcher steps out of the corner. Now Waters steps in, who in the save? And Waters gets the rebound, stopped by Poulin again. Couple quick chances for Brooklyn, but Mike Poulin up to the task. And the Lakers are back on the offensive side of center. Now Katoni, off to Austin Hazen. Hazen drops it off for Reza Terrence, who shoots and gets stopped by DeMood. Chad Tutton. Finds the loose ball and works this one off as Holden Katoni sets up in the offensive zone and a fresh shot clock for Peterborough. Reza Terrence. Worked it off, Katoni wasn't ready for the pass as it bounces off the boards and Matthews leaves it for Hazen with less than 10 to shoot. Holden Katoni will just fire it out of play and it will be Brooklyn ball. Ryan Lanchbury. Out to Chris Bushy. Bushy spinning away from Hope steps in and that gets stopped by Poulin. Jay Thornburg. Bins away from pressure and fires a shot wide. Picked up quickly off the end boards by Curtis Knight. Now here's Brady Kiernan with speed, pulling the save. Rebound picked up by Mitch Ogilvy. 10 minutes to go in the third. 11-7 Brooklyn, game two, major series lacrosse semifinal between the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club and Peterborough Lakers as Mark Matthews gets stopped by Nick DeMuth. Game one between Six Nations and Coburg will play tomorrow. Six Nations, the host team in that series after securing the one seed in major series lacrosse through the regular season. Brady Kiernan steps in, pulling the save, and Chad Tutton finds the rebound. Two quick goals by Brooklyn in this third period, but other than that, Mike Poulin who with Stellar at the end of period number two, has been solid here in the final 20 minutes of this contest. Loose ball picked up by Nick DeMood, so that ends the Peterborough possession. Now there's a turnover, and DeMood diving through the air makes the save. Can you believe what that was? And that shot goes through. Now take Katoni gets his Helmet ripped off. Lots happening. Nick DeMood with maybe the save of the year and then an unbelievable goal scored by Peterborough. Some rough stuff after the play and everything happening here as we check out the replay. Yeah, the turnover by DeMood right to Tate Catoni. DeMood makes the save and then cutting to the net there for the goal is Hogarth. And then after the whistle there, after the dramatic save and then the superman light goal, I believe it was Tate Catoni that was getting into it. We're gonna get a couple penalties here. We'll see how they decide to 
score it. Regardless, Peterborough gets the goal, makes it 11 to seven. It looks like we'll get five on five, as both are gonna sit from the looks of it for four minutes. And here's your extended look here, as there's the diving save, a dramatic save, a great one there for Nick DeMood. And then Thomas Hogarth just cuts to the net right afterwards, collecting that rebound gets that seventh goal. Five players who side on the floor, but they initially had the penalties up on the board. They take them down now. Eleven eight is the score. Brooklyn leading Peterborough, but Thomas Hogarth with an unbelievable goal after Nick DeMood with maybe the save of the year. Yeah, there's a lot to go on in the score. They keep adding goals to Brooklyn and have not given it. We, we have it right on our screen. So they're just going to have to sort out the clock here as we still don't see the penalties. So both Willman and Katoni getting unsportsmanlike conducts and roughings aside. So both will sit off for four minutes and a whistle. Thomas Hogarth with his second of the game, his fourth of the series. And with under nine minutes to play, it's a three goal game once again here in Whitby. Plenty of time, plenty of time. Peterborough back into the offensive zone. Mark Matthews works that one off. Now Reza Teretz couldn't find it in the corner. Picked up by Zach Young. Now stretches the floor with Wild and Stevens. Jake Stevens controls it at the side of the net. Steps around the goal and Curtis Knight will slow things down as Luke Pilcher and Chris Bushy come off the bench. 10 to shoot for Brooklyn. Curtis Knight gets the screen from Bushy and that will make it Peterborough ball after he knocked the defender down to the floor. Now a stretch pass for Chad Tutton. And he scores! It got through. Chad Tutton with his first of the series. And Peterborough's within two with 7.46 to go in the third. And you'll see it here, the long lead pass as Tutting goes for the break. As soon as the ball's on the floor, he's taken off. And he gets that in stride, a beautiful feed down the floor. And with Knight trying to get back and try to pull it off the goal line. We don't have it on there, the angle there, but it took a while for it to cross the line for the ref nurse to Throw his hands up and call that one a goal. 11-9, down to two goal game. It was 11-5. And now Reza Teretz finds Hogarth and he gets stopped by Nick DeMood. Very nice save there from DeMood to get that right hand on that one or else we'd have a one goal game just like that. Well, you'd have to think that Brooklyn will need to get that confidence back in Nick DeMood and quick as Peterborough scored the last four. Now Brady Kiernan's shot goes wide. Here's Ryan Lanchbury. Six to shoot for Brooklyn. Lanchbury off to Brady Kiernan. Kiernan steps in. That shot gets blocked, goes wide. Dyson Williams touched it towards the net after the shot clock had expired. So it's Peterborough ball. Dyson Williams oh so close to his hat trick goal, but it came just after the shot clock expired. Here's Mark Matthews. He rings it off the post. DeMood didn't know where it was. Bouncing behind the Brooklyn net, Wild finds it. Stretch pass for Pilcher. Bounces off the boards right to Mike Poulin. Now here's a chance for Pace who gets stopped by DeMood. 
Loose ball goes into the Brooklyn crease. And Brooklyn able to reset things as Jake Stevens will step over center. And Brooklyn back into the offensive zone. Six minutes to go in the third. Ryan Lanchbury. Pass got knocked down. as a penalty coming up here to Peterborough. And Bushi down in pain on the floor. Five seconds to shoot. Quick pass. Williams at the end of the shot clock got blocked. And Brooklyn will be going to the power play with 5.42 to go in the third and a two-goal advantage. And we'll take another look at it here as Paul Dawson pleading his case going to the penalty box. Yeah, you'll see him just come right across and get his head hit right up high on the head of Chris Bushi, who goes right to the floor and is slow to get up. And he eventually clued in, got up, and almost got the pass right in front and threw it on net as the shot clock was set to expire. But yeah, Paul Dawson coming in right across the floor and making the primary point of contact the head of Chris Bushi. And he's going to sit for that. So Brooklyn to the power play. Less than six to go in the game. A two goal advantage for Brooklyn. Dyson Williams working it with Brady Kiernan. Now here's Connor Kiernan, quick pass. Lansbury gets stopped by Mike Poulin. Peterborough tries to stretch the floor. Gilray got knocked off the ball. And Brady Kiernan will pick it up and reset the shot clock. 83 seconds to go in the power play for Brooklyn. Connor Kiernan. Works it off to Lansbury. Kyle Waters. Dyson Williams gets stopped by Poulin. Lansbury back to Connor Kiernan. Now Williams again. Up top to Kiernan. Back to Williams. Dyson Williams has that one knocked away, and Robert Hope on the interception for Peterborough, and Chad Tutton brings it up the floor and over the timeline. Tutton breaks away from the defender and now has the lane to the net. Chad Tutton waits, now drives in, and he scores! Second of the period for Chad Tutton. That one comes short-handed, and it's a one-goal game with 4.25 to go. Chad Tutton once again, the guy who's going to step up right here, makes the move, fakes the shot, gets towards the net, and scores on Nick Demood. And it's a one-goal game now. I don't know how many people saw that coming, but the whole season between these two teams has been tightly contested to statistically and on the floor by the eye test. Neither team are out of it and are able to score in bunches. And right now we're seeing that in the Peterborough Lakers. And I believe we are having some discussion with Paul Dawson in the box, pleading his case for some reason. Nonetheless, there is still a mop on the floor, so we're not ready to get set yet as Nick DeMood makes his way back towards the Brooklyn net. Forty-three seconds of power play time still for Brooklyn. But Chad Tutton takes the air out of the crowd a little bit here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center. And now Matt Gilray has his stick knocked out of his hands by Jake Stevens. Big defensive play there. Ryan Lanchbury back into the offensive zone. Final possession of this power play for Brooklyn. Lansbury off to Williams, gets it back. Bushy a quick shot, and that one goes wide. Over and back against Brooklyn. So Peterborough will wait the 10 seconds. Get their player, Paul Dawson, back on the floor and be back to five on five. 3.42 to go in the third period. 
in a one goal game in game number two. Mark Matthews with a shot that goes out of play and it's still Peterborough ball. Holding Katoni off to Mark Matthews. Now here's a shot from Hogarth that goes wide. Over and back against Peterborough will give Brooklyn back possession with three minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Ryan Lansbury. Off to Curtis Knight. Now Lansbury to Brady Kiernan. Shovels it off to Dyson Williams, whose shot gets stopped by Poulin. Goes out of play. It will stay Brooklyn ball. Lansbury back tonight. Dyson Williams gets a screen. Steps in. Back to Kiernan. Brady Kiernan stopped by Poulin. A great job by Poulin to come out of the net there and challenge that ball. Take Katoni. Works it off to Joe Rezateritz. The hot hand for Peterborough with a hat trick in this one. Take Katoni to Mark Matthews, who is called on the violation for shoving down Adam Peroni. And it will be Brooklyn Ball. Peroni. Worked it off into the offensive zone. Here's Bushi out in front for Connor Kiernan. Picks it up off the boards after the missed pass. Jake Stevens to Dyson Williams. Driving to the net, steps around the crease. Now Stevens, out in front, he scores! Jake Stevens picks up his first goal of the playoffs and gives Brooklyn a two goal lead with 2.05 to go in the third. And what a guy to get rewarded, Jake Stevens, who's been doing what head coach Crosby's been preaching. He's been rushing that ball up the floor in transition, and here he is with the big guys in an offensive zone possession, and he gets rewarded sitting right alone in the slot there, grabs it, spins, fires it low, and regains a two-goal lead here with a tick over two minutes to go. So a massive one for Jake Stevens, who has played well defensively and in the transition game, then puts his mark on this one on the offensive score sheet. Holding Katoni's shot goes wide, and that's over and back against Peterborough. Now you're playing the possession game if you're Brooklyn here. The clock is not your friend, but is your friend in this case, where you can kill some of it. A full rundown of the clock takes it down to a minute, eight seconds. Dyson Williams with the ball in his hand. Steps around the net, crashing into the end boards. Three Laker defenders all over him to pull that ball free, and they finally do. So a fresh shot clock for Peterborough as Poulin goes running off to the bench. Dyson Williams slow to get out of the offensive zone, so a chance here for Peterborough with numbers. But Mike Byrne able to find that loose ball. There's Nick DeMood. Tried to go down the floor for Dyson Williams, but Mike Poulin plays it back to Reza Terrence. Now Mark Matthews with a shot that goes wide. Holding Katoni. Off to Matisse. Now Matthews. Can't find the pass off the boards. Here's Chris Wilman. Draped all over by Tate Katoni, and Brooklyn takes a timeout with 31 seconds on the game clock and a 29 second shot clock. Yeah, Jason Crosby instantly puts his hands up in the air to call that timeout. He's actually going to draw up some sort of play here. But they have possession, as you mentioned, a fresh shot clock, 31 seconds. So shot clock's not. Not out of the question yet in this game, is still required. We're gonna take a look at how we got here. It was 11-5 Brooklyn at one point. Peterborough put the pedal to the metal, brought themselves within one, 
with five consecutive goals. And, and here's that great save from Nick DeMood, but then just seconds later, gives it right up there to a great play by Hogarth. And then the long stretch pass, again, goes the way of the Peterborough Lakers, and they just kept it coming, firing at all cylinders to get back within this game. And that's where we sit 12 to 10 with 31 seconds to go, but it's gonna be Brooklyn ball. So Jake Stevens on the restart for Brooklyn with two defenders in front of him. Matt Gilray and Mitch Ogilvy. Stevens slips away and brings it over center floor. Now here's Luke Pilcher. Time the friend of Brooklyn. Three second differential, two second differential between game clock and shot clock. Barnable plays it into the corner but it goes out of play. And we'll get a stoppage with nine seconds left and a timeout called by Peterborough. We did see Dyson Williams score two goals within seven seconds of each other. He got the second one, that is. And Peterborough did score two goals in 20 seconds, so quick goals not out of the question here. But the clock not in the front of the Lakers right now, Andrew. No, and it's gonna be a matter of where they start the ball and how they get the ball down the floor as we see Peter Peterborough huddling around the clipboard here to see what the play is going to be. But that's gonna be the first question is how quick can they get the ball into the offensive zone and then do they get their shot on net and their shot on net needs to be in the net for them to have a chance. If not, that ball's gonna ricochet and the clock will expire. But they're gonna start all the way in their own zone here. And they're gonna be quick off the whistle here. Gil Matisse off to Mark Matthews. Resiteric shot gets stopped. That one goes out of play. And they're gonna add two seconds back to the clock. So this one's not over just yet. They're gonna add two seconds. Peterborough will get a restart. So this game's not over just yet. And they will start the clock. Mark Matthews fires it towards the net. The clock expires. Brooklyn wins game two and ties this series at one game apiece. Almost lost it in the third period, but able to hang on. And they don't ask how, they ask how many. This series is even at one. Yeah, and it, the trend continues. The home team walks off the floor with the victory again. The losing team only able to put up as many as 10 within this season series between these two teams. So trends continuing, but it's gonna be a 1-1 series as they head to Brooklyn, getting ready for Thursday. Back in Peterborough, 1-1 is the series all tied up. Our friends Pete, Scott, and Dan will have that for you on your TV. You can watch it here on Rogers TV Durham. Game three, a big one, pivotal in the series as the series shifts back to the Peterborough Memorial Center, all squared up at one game apiece, thanks to a 12-10 win for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club in game number two. This game had everything, including a goalie change for Peterborough, but it wasn't enough. Brooklyn comes away with the victory and evens the series. For Andrew Osmond and our incredible crew here at Rogers TV Durham, we'll see you for game four here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center. I'm Jack Moore saying good night from Whitby.